A big Tate Fletcher. A powerful Tate Fletcher. Is a, is a real alpha male. Weightlifter. He's a stuntman. Movie star. Robust, enthusiastic individual. He's huge, by the way. He's like a monster person. One of the sweetest guys I know. He's bigger than life. Actor. Entrepreneur. A fighter. The jiu-jitsu technician. He's also bald and he has all these tattoos. He's just a big fucking man. Uh, a man, a myth, a legend. Tate. Tate Fletcher. Tate. Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. What's up, Tate Fletcher, you bad Fletcher. motherfucker? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher is Tate Fletcher. 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 That's Tate Fletcher, everybody. The great Tate Fletcher. <laughs> Tate the animal Fletcher. Tate the savage Fletcher. Always moving. There's no stillness with Tate Fletcher. You will find no dust. Tate Fletcher's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He just said the word erection. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher's in the fucking house. Tate Fletcher! Tate really blasts out some serious, hardcore truth bombs, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Yeah, welcome to the podcast, y'all. Today, we got the pleasure of having my good friend Kyle Noak on the podcast, and Kyle's a current UFC fighter, getting ready to go to Australia, where this is also his homeland, and... Um, fight on the Ronda Rousey card that's out there. I call it the Kyle Nolte card, of course. And uh, he and Holly will be leaving town, I guess, tomorrow morning. Uh, I've known Kyle a long time. Uh, going way back, he, um, uh, I guess I met him through a mutual friend, Danny, and and, um, and and Kyle met Danny. They were both partners, um, uh, bodyguard and a beautiful man. Um, you know, who has since passed, and, and uh, you know, um, got to see him. We've been trying to hook up a podcast for a couple of days, and so today, here, here's, here's uh, he, 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 it sounds like Carl when he says it, so sometimes you're going to hear me say Carl, because that's kind of how he pronounces Kyle, because not American. <laughs> However, um, oh, it's Kyle. It, oh, it's, oh, it's Kyle. It's Kyle. Oh, and we are going to do this earlier today, but then we had the craziest time. So... That dude earlier today, what did you think about it? We, we, when we ran in, we are going to do, do the podcast. I go down to Jackson's. Me and Keith are there. And then Greg stops us, and he's like, hey, I want you to meet my friend Nick. And, and Nick is an ex-CIA guy. Kyle's down hitting mitts with Wink. And uh, so we're talking to this guy for a while. And, and then it just turns into one thing after the other. Next thing I know, I got some kind of, I don't know, it, was like, it wasn't an M4. It was like a 5.56 or so. I'm not sure exactly what kind of a rifle I got in my hand. And Keith's got another one, and then we're doing a building clearing. <laughs> that he's he's showing us like close cut quarters, uh, combat and and uh, safety and stuff. And so that's how the afternoon went. And so we missed the chance for podcast. And now uh, off your third workout or something today. Fourth, fourth, fourth. fifth, fifth. Golly, you missed them days. <laughs> how old are you? Uh thirty-five. How do you do it? I mean, how long have you had, like, uh, more than two a day is this week? Every day. Every day. I have, most, most of the time I'll have six a day. At the least I'll have three. <laughs> but, so what you're saying is if a guy has a part-time job and he fights, he, he's not going to do well. Well, I do because I, I don't, I don't, have, a, I don't have a part-time job. That's why I oh, do Oh, I know you do And i got to keep You're busy. You're out there getting it done. Oh, no. I'm out there trying to make ends meet. swim, me. too? Swim, too, yeah. You know when I I'm talk the best swimmer in town. That's probably not true, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely true. I don't know if you ever I'll seen... I'll challenge anyone in town. I don't town. know if you ever seen Keith Jardine sink <laughs> to the bottom of the ocean. I have, actually. He fights the water. When we were, oh, he does yeah. fight the water. He's not one with the water. <laughs> no. When we were in Hawaii, dude, and uh, and we were, we'd go surfing, and those fucking Hawaiians, they'd be like, it was, a, it was a, after a while, and, and like they were like they felt more comfortable with us, but because uh, I get brown as fuck, and then yeah. like other dudes would come up and they go, "What island are you from, bro?" And uh, <laughs> and uh, and Keith looks like a goddamn polar bear out uh. there, and he's like, "You two guys out there, <laughs> like." like Two huge bears uh, on boards uh, surfing in. It's like, I, God knows what we look like, but it's a lot of fun. But uh, you, yeah, you grew up surfing then, and by the ocean and all that. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I didn't. Sharks. I didn't grow up. No, I didn't grow up. So I, grew, I wrestled crocodiles. I didn't grow up wrestling. I didn't grow up surfing. Um, I actually grew up in a country town in Australia. But when I moved to the Sunshine Coast, which is a different area, um, when I hooked up with Steve Irwin and started working for him, he comes up to me one day while I'm working. He's like, "Do you know how to surf?" Out of nowhere, I'm like... And he had known how to surf? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He actually could have turned pro at one point. No way. Yeah. 
So he had a choice of going pro, surfer. So what or, got him into being the crocodile hunter? Well, that was the thing. He he grew up in a zoo. His dad owned the zoo. So he had a choice. Uh, he, that was that's what he'd done. He grew up with animals and that's awesome. Lots of crazy stuff. But anyway, he, was, he had a he had a choice at one point of uh, becoming a pro surfer or pursuing the uh, pursuing his family hunter, life yeah. kind of deal. Yeah. And that was a time he didn't know there was going to be a show. He didn't know there was going to be no. anything. He was just doing what he loved. That's what I see over and over again, Carl. Yeah, that's exactly. He was nobody doing, that yeah. I know that I'm like God. That guy's life, how interesting, and how did that happen? And it's like there's not one of those guys that is doing the thing that they're doing and going. This is how I'm going to make money. Yeah, none of those guys started that way. They're right. like, oh, I'll do this thing and it's going to be fun or whatever. And then fucking the crazy things happen. Yeah. You know? Well, that was him. He was doing that, and then uh, they called him in to do a stunt for a TV commercial. The director of the stunt show. They had an animal or something. Yeah, no, no, he had to, it was a solo, which is like a fizzy drink back home, uh, okay. like lemonade, I don't know. Yep. But he had to kayak down a mountain and then fall off a mountain into a crocodile infested water. So obviously so no maybe one, you're unconscious when you yeah. land. Like, <laughs> yeah, that might happen. That's sketchy as fuck. Yeah, it was something like that. And uh, no one would do it. And Steve's like, hell yeah, I'll do it, you know. So he done it and the director's like, this guy's crazy. That's some we need, to, we need to catch us some more what he does. That guy has balls like crazy. Oh, yeah. Huh? Just crazy balls. Yeah, like it, it wow. whatever adrenaline, whatever got his it's adrenaline pumping. It's almost like you think that that stingray, how brave that stingray was, yeah. <laughs> just to think. You know what? Maybe I'll try it. You I'm know gonna try I mean? this guy. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. You ever talk to his family? His like his daughter. I know he's got a daughter and a wife. That right? Uh, yeah. He has no, the, no sons. Yes, a son as well. He does. Yeah. Um, Do you is, ever get to link up, or when you go home, or is um, it just too hard? It's, no, it's it, it's hard because I'm not home that often. But right. uh, we keep in contact on uh, social media and stuff like that cool. as well. And she's obviously doing Dancing with the Stars right now and killing it on there. Really? Yeah, the American Sick. version too, not the Australian smaller version. Dude, I gotta watch. I never watch that kind of stuff. I watched Sixteen nah. and Pregnant the other day because Brendan Shaw was like, "It's an awesome <laughs> show," and I was like, "That's impossible." And then I was home and I was like, I turned it on and. It's like this is an awesome show. Like I feel nah. way better about my whole life. I can't. Like you watch that life, and you're like, I made a lot of right turns that I didn't <laughs> know that I did. These people are not. I'm watching them make uh, left turns, and they. So yeah. it's a show to make you feel better about yourself. That's what I think. I, <laughs> I don't know why else Jesus would have brought us that show except that. There's two out of four of the teens that they had on there whose mothers were in jail. They had to do phone calls. Uh, there were time phone calls. Like, will you accept a call from Clark County Jail? Type shit. I was like, this is amazing. I got it. No, I'm not going to watch amazing. it. It's amazing. I'm not going to watch it. Next, you'll be you'll watching love, Kardashians. Maybe. That's it. You know what? I look at those. Everybody hates on those girls, but they're the best marketers in the country. I yeah. mean, we could all learn a little something from the Kardashians. Yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? One sex tape with the black guy. Boom. Right. Next thing you know, zam. You're fucking, the, you know, you're right on top of the world. Did you hear that her mother made her go back and reshoot the sex tape? No way, but that's, it makes it That's hot. what I heard. That, I haven't seen the sex tape even, but to me, that makes it sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Did you jerk off to it? No. It's not jerk offable? Uh, uh, I don't like, I don't like the Kardashians at all. The, she got a juicy ass body. It's too big. Too big. Too big. Her bo booty's too big for me. Too deep. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. It's oh. massive. Come on. It's yeah. ridiculously big. Well, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the tape. I'm gonna have um, to watch. No, in the in the video it was good, but okay. like when you see her in in like a, a candid shot from somewhere, right. yeah, it's like the booty's too. You big. know, there's the, the with the shots and the stuff and the this and that. There was a time in my life I only dated strippers because one time I took a girl home and you take your pants out uh, like and it looks great in tight uh -huh. pants and then it kind of falls apart after, uh -huh. and and I was so scarred by that. <laughs> I was I was traumatized. I felt like I'd been tricked and lied to. It's the same way I feel about push-up bras, really. Yeah. I felt like I'd been tricked and lied to, and then I was like, I'm only dating strippers because I can see her in her <laughs> G-string, and I know exactly what all that looks like. Uh -huh. Now, then I learned about emotional damage later, uh -huh. and that maybe I didn't want that either. But not to say that they're all like that, but I was a magnet. God bless uh, strippers. Yeah, God bless America, huh? <laughs> and Australia. And Australia. Australia who, they have strip clubs who? in Australia? Yeah, we got great. Yeah, we got uh, people prostitution's talk about, legal. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, yeah. Because people in Brazil, they talk about strip clubs and they're not strip clubs. I, and I think, I'm like, America's the only place that has strip clubs. Because everywhere else where, if, you're, if your man goes out, out of the country, I don't know if you know this or not, and he goes to a strip club, he for sure banged somebody <laughs> because those are all whorehouses. Yeah, but uh, but actually, ours are strip clubs. They're not whorehouses. Well, there's but we one, have legit whorehouses. Really? You know, like it's, it's. I legal. was just like my Brazilian friend. He came and he goes, he couldn't believe it. Yeah. He was like, they pay hundreds of dollars to get a boner and go home. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and he put it like that, and I was like, oh. 
I've done that. And I'm like, that's that doesn't make any sense at all. You're right. That yeah, seems yeah. horrible. I got sad. I think maybe it's for the married man. We didn't have to cheat. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I know there was a there was a portion of the country in Brazil too where the women weren't readily admitting it, but it, where like that thing it kept men from having a mistress, and so they were kind of like thought of as a, a nice occupation in a way. Like it was like doing a service to the country and yeah. families. Helping families thought, out. Like here's here's porn stars keeping <laughs> keeping families together one scene at a time. Oh, why not? That's what Phoenix Marie says. Who's that? She's a porn star in America. Oh, okay. here. I did a nice show with her. Uh, it was uh, on Playboy Radio or something. Sam Tripoli was hosting. And uh -huh. he says, will you come down and, and judge um, some assholes for me? I'm like, like, fucking dickheads and he's like no he says we got all the hustler honeys that are coming down and we're having an asshole contest where we're judging and i was like so what what was the criteria awesome. for judging there's a lot of stuff but i got there a little late unfortunately because apparently phoenix who's like the queen of that type of activity uh -huh. had her foot nearly all the way entrenched inside a girl's ass but there was two twin <laughs> sisters that were like I think Polish or Czech Republic or something like that. That uh -huh. were there. They were vying for the title. Uh -huh. I mean, they they were after. They were eager to compete. So you mean like the? But actual, it was like pretty nice. Yeah, like the, the, the actual butthole. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. So like it was on crazy. Color and smell. Yeah, and all that. I would say too. <laughs> at the, there's some porn stars that are stunning, man. Yeah, stunning. But then you look at most maybe, and you go. The makeup lady at the porn set is the most under, under, like, <laughs> thanked person in the world because she turns people around. She, yeah, I'm like she just made your life right, and that's not what your life looks like at all. Yeah. So I'm, I guess that is a spoiler. Porn is not really real, guys. I'm sorry. Well, I don't watch too much porn anyway. Well, you don't need it. You're a UFC star. Yeah. Come on. I mean, you're in, I mean, you're in love. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, my my girl my girlfriend back home is about to have a baby in April. Back home, back in Australia. In Australia, yes, a, a good Australian baby. I thought you had an American. No, no, that was years ago. Oh, I, I, so you never keep I in contact with me. I thought Denver. Denver, yeah, that's the name. Her the name is blonde one. Her name's Denver. Denver. Are you kidding me right now? No. God damn it, Carl. I'm looking at you online and I'm seeing what's her. She's got an Instagram name that's like Denver or something or Denver, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denver Blondie or something. And, 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 and that's not what it is. I'm not <laughs> blowing you up. But like, but like, I thought it was a girl that was from Denver that lived in the in the Denver no, mountains no, no, that no. you would drive up. I'm like, of course, he lives in Albuquerque. He'd be driving back and forth. No, she's from Australia. For and the no. love of Jesus. Yeah. Are you going to at least have the baby on American soil? No, we're having it because we get paid to have the baby in Australia. I mean, you get paid. Well, the government's going to give us. I think it's five thousand dollars or something to have a baby. Why? Because that's what we do. We're Australian. Why wouldn't you just be having loads of babies in every no, year? People do, but then you've got to raise the baby as well. Not really. And then pay for it. Yeah. Not in America. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I noticed. Why the Albuquerque's got the crime rate that it does, Tate? <laughs> wow. Yeah, but they give but us. But then you could get citizenship for the little devil if he was born here. Are you gonna call him Taz? No. Why not? No, I wanted to. I, I wanted if to. If I had him, an Australian baby, I'd name him Taz for sure. <laughs> I wanted to call him something like Bear or something. I don't know, something strong. And then, no. Do you know what? Anyway, I don't even know what I'm having yet. She really? won't find out. She won't find out until after my fight. So her name is Denver. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, her parents love the Rocky Mountains. I have no idea. You didn't ever ask her the derivation of her name. Like, no. I was like, I, it doesn't bother me. That's so. What you said was true. You were too caught up in the beauty of her eyes to ask anything exactly. about it. Exactly. Jeez. Jeez, I hope she's listening. This is romance. All right. I love that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, all right then. But yeah, I'm gonna be a dad. Cool. Yeah. Shab too. Brendan's having a I little baby really? too. Yeah. Big Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Big Brown's having a little brown. I, I like guess. that guy. He's one of the best, man. It's yeah. like I was talking to KJ today about it and. He's talking about the podcast that we're doing, and it's like, it's like, there's some guys that's like, and like talking to Keith is like that, or talking to you, or, or like Joey or something, and Brendan for sure. It's just like, the people that care about the certain same things that that they're doing things for the similar reasons that they're looking 
at other things in ways that are like like how can i be helpful used like it's i don't even want to say morality or maybe it's values or something but like uh -huh. man it's just it's a it's a beautiful thing because like and, and that's the thing i think too about podcasts and all that is like it gives a uh, conversation to it and then because i need that because not every day is like that like i mean i'm sure you're going through it being six times a day training up and down and like there's i mean you know it's er everything is like pushing to where a breaking point is and then then backing off of it and then pushing the breaking point further away from you again and all that uh -huh. that's a mental process man yeah it is have you been swimming too and all that yeah yeah i think i told you earlier i'm the best swimmer in albuquerque now now cowboy said he was too oh, come on cowboy sinks compared to me really yeah you're a I'm the man they, them guys wear flippers and everything and i still surpass them so do you know you ever do that winhoff training like the breath training and stuff you ever hear that guy winhoff the ice man no is that the guy he climbed everest in his shorts <clears throat> Yeah, I think Alistair Overeem's actually bringing him mm -hmm. over here to Albuquerque. That's right. Yeah. He works with Alistair. Yeah, yeah. Changes your endocrine system, your testosterone, your everything. Really? That's what he says, like by breathing. And your immune system, he can embolden all that stuff, man. He is a trip. He's on, I think last week he was on Rogan's podcast. Okay. You should listen to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll it. Download it tonight and so you cool. can listen on the way home. Because yeah. you can do the breathing techniques by yourself. Like it's, yeah. it's sick. Yeah, I'm down. Um, I need but, to raise my testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> But I think those guys, are, I've got a friend uh, that owns Deuce Gym in uh -huh. Venice, Logan, and he goes up with another buddy of mine, Sal, that uh, he, they go up to Laird's place, mm -hmm. and and um, he does pool workouts. And so they do workouts, I don't know if it's like a 20-foot deep pool, but okay. with, with dumbbells. Yeah. And so they'll do like 100 reps of sink to the bottom and go into a squat and push as hard as you can, and then when you break the surface, <laughs> And then you sink back down, you, so you get a little breath, and you okay. do 100 jump squats like that. And that's how you get warmed up. That's the warm-up. And then <laughs> you go down. Like He's like, one of them is like, you go down, and you push up. No, you go down, you take a breath, jump in, sink, run uh -huh. across the bottom with weights, yeah. right? Push up set one on the side of the pool and then swim across with one arm one weight in your chest uh -huh. so you're swimming across yeah. and then you're you're trying to stay on the top as much as you can mm -hmm. and this is all in one breath you go down and then you go back again and then go up and drop it and so it's all this crazy breath worth like that and i guess yeah. it's got stairs that go down to the bottom of the pool and it's like one dumbo that like crawling up and all, like all this crazy, crazy stuff so you're anaerobic aerobic, underwater on yeah. one breath and all yeah. that and like pushing off that death yeah we yeah that is crazy i'd love to do that it's i mean it sounds it sounds wonderful i'm yeah. for sure gonna go if i get the chance to and then they do severe ice bass hot ice bass hot yeah. like they do all that stuff right after yeah. it sounds awesome but that's how like he's getting ready to surf he's like it's gonna be the biggest surf <laughs> this year ever we we done and, something like that in the pool here where uh the, they cable tied our hands together so we couldn't use our ooh, hands and ooh. then the there's a diving pool so it's like 15 to 20 feet right. deep we had to go all the way down the bottom touch spring up without using your hands and make it all the way to the surface one breath and then go down again you had to do it all the way across the pool right is it getting shallower as you go across no it's getting deeper because you're heading towards this the boards wow yeah so i was the only one that could do it, it was me and, and uh john jones because you guys are tall yeah that's got to help. I mean, it's got to be yeah. something. I mean, you're pushing more mass but, to the water, though, too. I don't know. It's got to equal yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know if point. the tallness going to do with it. Really? I think it's just the comfortable, uh, the comf comfortableness, if that's a word. Comfortability or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why you're a smart I don't know guy. if that's a word or not. I could have made that up, too. Don't <laughs> sounds, I don't, it sounds sure. good. These people are going to Google shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, we don't know. No, but I'm used to it, like being in the water with surfing and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, you need to get used to being held underwater when you don't want to. Well, and that's what they're saying, like, they're like, sometimes you got to stay underwater for like two sets for like, yeah. you know what I mean? And that could Absolutely. be four minutes. Exactly. And I was like, that, and that, and then not knowing where you are, being disoriented and all yeah. that stuff. And so how do you create a state of panic in a safe environment to where if you do get into a, a tumbling washer kind of thing in the waves, like you'll be okay still. Yeah. There's a guy that just surfed Mavericks. Uh -huh. um, those are American waves okay. up there on the coast of California. So little waves? A hundred footers, I think. <laughs> And uh, I don't know what they were this year, but um, this guy, uh, Nick, is, um, I'm going to do a podcast with him, I think, on Monday. And, uh -huh. uh, and it should be interesting. I never talked to a surfer except, like, I've talked to Laird Hamilton. I've talked to 
Kelly Slater. Kelly had hours worth of shark stories that were terrifying to me that he just giggles about. Like he yes, is yeah. like, it's a trip, dude. Yeah. I mean, they like dudes that are like that. And I think maybe it's being that comfortable in the water too or whatever. Yeah. And also it's like, this is the thing we do. And he's like, I like death being right there. He says, if it's not a dangerous wave, I'm not having fun. I go, what's dangerous? What do you like to surf? He goes like 50 footers. And I go, mm. how big is 50? And he takes me outside and... <laughs> We look at light poles, yeah, or whatever electrical <laughs> poles, and he goes like like that or bigger, you know. And and then I'm, I'm I look at that and I look across the street at the next one. And I'm like, and that's a wall of water, tons of water, yeah, literally tons of water. Yeah, exactly. God damn. Yeah, even when people say a six foot wave, or you look at someone they're like six foot tall, right, dude? And you're like, man, eh, it's kind of big, but then you go, no, no. You put your head down on the ground and look up at them at right. six foot, yeah. and that's wall, that's the wave that's coming towards you because yeah. you're you're at that level, you know. I, I was uh, in Waikiki when we learned to surf, and um, it was like I mean I don't know if they were two feet tall maybe, but like I remember <laughs> when when like four footers would come uh -huh. in and I was like that's something, and then when they got yeah. overhead and it was like that's a that's considerable and it's trickier because it's steeper so where you catch it is different your uh, placement on the board i was like i i had so much trouble when they got to be like overhead like that yeah. high, i was like i don't know how to do this one the other ones i can get but yeah. like this is hard for me to catch did keith jardine stand up yeah yeah all right yeah I saw I mean, there, I there's know. a picture of him he looks like it's crazy looking it's it's wild yeah. there and there was a kid man he was super cool man he'd come he just dropped out of life to go and paddleboard and stuff and so he, and then he started taking pictures love pictures he created a whole job for himself out there and that awesome. and so he would go out and he'd have a gopro on the end of his on the end of his thing and he'd uh -huh. just follow he just loved to follow us around like yeah. i guess because we look like freaks but like yeah. <laughs> he would take pictures and send them and stuff is cool it's neat man and that whole culture around the ocean i mean I, that's yeah. why i think the coastlines of wherever you are are like they're just cooler places it's a different kind of thing and i don't know if it's a mellowness that the ocean breeds where you just feel like uh, like maybe part of something bigger than yourself or something like yeah. that there's some kind of an ego deflation that happens i think the mountains do that too in yeah, a way exactly if you get what I was up about there. To say, yeah, yeah. There's, is there certain things in nature that do that to you like yeah the ocean's definitely one of them man it brings it for me it brings a it's calmness. magical it's a yeah. magical thing yeah. I got to swim with dolphins out there. Uh, my friend oh, yeah. Brian Keelano took me out sailing, and then he's like, oh, get the goggles, get the goggles, and go down, and there are all these flipper dolphins, and then there's like 30 right underneath. It was just, it was crazy, man. I never swam with dolphins. Beautiful. We'll go out. We'll go out when we get rich. The, uh, oh. After this well, you fight. can take me what now. You you're, already, you're already rich. You can take rich, me now. Rich as I ever been. I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, the very first time I went scuba diving, though, with, uh, I was actually with Steve Owen, we're on a boat, and he's like, this guy's giving me a rundown of all the scuba gear. You know, this is what happens, this, this. And I'm starting to like, what the fuck's going on? I'm going to freak out underwater. And Steve's like, ah, oh, don't fucking listen to him. Put this in your mouth. If you spew, push the front of the thing here. You're good to go. Let's go. That's and awesome. I was like, all right, cool. Spit in your goggles. Wipe yeah. it out. Let's <laughs> yeah. do it. Because that, that was him. Like, don't overcomplicate shit. That, well, and that's what uh, that CIA dude Nick was saying today, too. He goes, yeah. he goes, all these guys, and I just attribute, I, I likened it to like kung fu uh -huh. instructors where it's like, no, there's all kinds of magic and everything behind it. And it's like, no, if you can't give me a simple thing to do yeah. and I can practice that thing and get really good at it quickly. Yeah you suck as a teacher yeah right. and and like he's like the same thing with gunplay he says it's just this and it's this and it's like a lot of common sense and all that and yeah 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 was that's that cool at? like steve's cool like that huh Where oh he's yeah just like utilitarian like this is oh, how absolutely. we get from here to there we don't have to overthink it exactly. and all that like exactly that's what he was like yeah. anyway we were diving on this the very first time we went diving and we're on some shipwreck and next minute he nudges me i'm like what you know what does he want because i had to stay by him so he could show me what to do right and then he's pointing over in the distance. I'm like, what the fuck's he pointing at? And then next to me, big shark circles around us. And I look at him, and he kind of looks at me, and he's like, gives me the okay symbol. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm cool. He's cool. If he's cool, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool, yeah. So yeah. we just sort of, we sunk down a little bit lower. He'd, like, next to the boat, we just watched these big sharks from circles around us. And then now, what did he say off. they're doing? What's that behavior? He just, was just checking us out. It was just seeing what we were doing and seeing if you were edible, maybe. Yeah, well, deemed that you weren't. No, hopefully, yeah. I, I think it was full. I don't know. It just he, he didn't Christ. seem nervous at all. So I was like, cool. That's the I, I a good friend of mine and uh, really a brother, man, Darren Prescott. He he uh, he he's a he's in the water. He's he's like one of those guys that's got a different energy. You know, like I think I find that too. The guys that are in the water a lot, uh -huh. they got a different energy. Like a mouth. There's a it's a trip. 
but he's got dolphins that will circle him. There's a picture of him that his wife took with a long lens and she was on shore and he's standing on his paddleboard with his paddle across his waist. And there's three dolphins like right on the other side of him that have surfed us. So there's Finn, Finn, Finn right there and him standing there. He looks like he's goddamn Poseidon or something. <laughs> just get called in dolphins. And I was out with him one day and uh, I was tired and I was sitting on the board and just looking out in the ocean and, and, um, and he goes, hey, hey, hey. And I, and I look over and he's like, and he's pointing. I don't see it first. And then I look and there's fins. And I was like, <laughs> all right and I, I and then i look at shore and i'm like this is what it is you know you just kind of accept where you are and you're like whatever and uh and it was just dolphins but yeah. and he starts paddling towards me and, I, and like he said he like i was like well he's cool yeah and they start just playing and swimming on one side of them the other and they come right over they, i was like oh, that's so cool trip, right man. it's wild man that stuff is the best, I think. Yeah. That stuff, if you can get into nature and do that kind of thing, it's oh, the yeah. best. It's the, the best. The best thing for me when I'm surfing is uh, if I go out early in the morning where I live, you'll see a massive turtle just pop up right next to you to have a breath of air. Wow. And those things, you know, like, because of how big they are, you know, you know right. how old are they? Old as shit as, as well. Like, so you get one pop in like 100 you years old. You ever ride one? Like, no. We did have one at the zoo, though. Oh, yeah? When I worked there, it was a tortoise, and it was 175 years old. Isn't that wild? Her name was Harriet, and she was owned by Charles Darwin. No way. Uh-huh. And uh, that, that, that was the story anyway. That's what they said. That's what Steve told me. It's a hell of a good story. Steve and they said lie. they used to, uh, exactly. And they used to, uh, they said back in the day, like on boats and stuff, people would carve their names on the tortoise's backs right. and stuff like that, because they right. used to have them on a boat for some reason or other. I can't remember why. But then people would write messages to their friends and stuff. Maybe with good luck or some superstition or something. But it knows. actually, that they can feel it all through their shell. No way. Yeah, so it's like, it feels like your fingernail. It'd be like someone trying to cut their name into your fingernail with a knife. It's kind of shitty. Yeah. Not the worst, but not no, great. No, So, I don't know. Golly. I so love how, turtles and tortoises. How long are you going to stay in Australia? Uh, hopefully only a week or so. When you come, when you... when. When you uh, go come back, what do you, do you think? Like, do you think of setting roots here and there? Do you think of being like in that kind of a way? Uh, I do both. You know, um, I, I love it here. I'm not gonna lie, I love Albuquerque. Or do you uh, think when I'm done fighting, I'll just be in Australia and fuck it? No, when I'm done fighting, I want to be like in movies like you. I want to yeah, be Star Wars. That's what I want too. <laughs> I want you to do that too. Uh, no, I'd love to do that, but. Um, you know what? I, I don't know. I love America. Like, I do love America. It's the, the, the living here is really good. It's cheaper than Australia. Um, you know, everything's great, but I do miss home. I do miss the beach. It's yeah. something that I'm going to have to have around my life, I think, as I retire as a beach. But um, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like so I, you're in LA now, right? Yeah, I just moved to Venice too. From like, Venice I was beach. in kind of like Hollywood uh -huh. area more, but it makes all the difference. Like, oh, just the, the way the people are way different. It's just a different thing. Yeah. People are more desperate inland and they're like, frantic yeah. about and, and and there it's just like oh, we're just doing what we're doing and we'll do it tomorrow too yeah and whatever and yeah, it's so like that's ah, me. that feels good that's me all day. and then i feel like I could, uh, then i could get my stuff done and i don't feel frantic about it I'm yeah like, oh whatever i could do my podcast here i got my friends i can go train with and there's yeah. like uh, like all that kind of stuff we're trying to build like a web show and and like but like where you, when and when you're grouped up around a bunch of relaxed people there's more productivity and there's like mm -hmm. so who i've surrounded myself with has been the most important things like and and people are like that they they used to ask like oh how'd you get into fighting or whatever i'm like just lucky yeah. and, and then they laugh like i'm making a joke or something and i'm like yeah. and, and then after i said that a few times i go oh they think i'm joking and, and but it's like no man i feel fortunate because people think oh, that's a rugged kind of thing to do or whatever but for me man it was like freedom you know i mean you know and and uh mm. and it was like the first time you know like i felt like oh, i've set myself free in this way that's like that's disciplined and then i like it was moving somewhere and, and uh i could be proud of that and yeah and be you know measured and like and and thoughtful in different ways about the outside world because of that and yeah. and, and all that kind of thing and and so i i think that uh you know, and I and I just got lucky because there's a bunch of you know fake ass rappers out there too, and uh, that that are just like oh, I'm about this and that, and they're not about shit. Not but, right. But uh, um, and you got to watch that. And a dude told me a long time ago, he goes, "You got to follow somebody in this outfit, kid. Just be uh -huh. goddamn careful who you follow." And I just feel so fortunate with everybody that I I just fall into. You know, not by yeah. being smart, but just by being fortunate. Yeah. And it's been cool, man. It's like, yeah, well, that's you, the same you, you thing do, where uh, I am now. And now I do it more proactively. I'm more thoughtful about like, 
uh, that dude's energy is just bad and like he's nice and i like to hang out a little bit but i can only do that once every three weeks or or yeah. something like that because or people that are just continually having bad luck it's like you're making that happen you know and yeah. then, like i don't want to catch your bad luck or your negativity or start believing it because yeah. all those people have the same thing in common they go well, I couldn't do that because of this or like they're, it's just excuse yeah. laden and they can't own their mistakes and they can't ever. And so it's like, man, if you can't circumvent your own problems, I don't think I could fuck what you do. Yeah. Like, good luck to you. And, and I hope you listen to podcasts and that you read blogs <laughs> and shit like that. And you learn how to get out of your own goddamn way. But yeah, you know, what a good thing I heard uh, a good saying someone told me is uh, don't ruin a good apology with an excuse. Oh, like when you so fuck great, something up, it? right? Just own up to it. And say, yep. oh, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I fucked up. I'm sorry. Whenever the butt comes. Yeah, but I, you know, I had this and this. Well, I, I, to, I didn't give a fuck about that. Just I had apologize. someone and they go, "Hey, don't yeah, butt me," because yeah. they, they'd be like, "Hey, this and that," and I'd go, "No, no, I, I know." <laughs> yeah, but and I, and there'd be and it's like, don't. There's no retort. Just yeah. fucking know this. Yeah. You don't know anything. Right. learn this and let's move on yeah shut and, up and, take the and if i know that you can learn it and move on then we got we can still talk exactly. if you can't do that i know that we're done yeah cool exactly and then i yeah it's, it's a trip <laughs> it's a trip so you don't stay at the dorms here no nah. no i have my own place up when uh up that way do you miss your charger i do yeah i miss that whole thing i don't miss putting gas in it though is goito still around or no goito is in uh san diego he moved to um really? What's that gym out there? Alliance? No. Uh, the, with yeah. the with the Brazilian boys that like no. or the Mendez brothers and all that. No, no, we're, we're the same one. I think it's the same one. Uh, Ross Pearson and Gustafsson and them guys are right. Out. I think that's right. the right gym. And uh, Brandon Vera is down there. I think. I think so. But he does uh, the Spanish version of the UFC talk show it's on cool, TV. Man. He does a radio that's a great show. Great personality. That guy's smile is yeah putting asses in seats for yeah. sure. A good kid. Yep, he's great. So he works with uh, Vic a lot. Vic does a lot of the commentary for all that and stuff. Yeah, I would have no idea. Yeah, because you don't speak I don't Spanish. Speak Spanish. I ain't a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, what about Kong? Is he out there with him then? Tom, uh, no, he's he's, he's in Laguna back to England or something, now. right? Is he? Yeah. He got engaged and uh, moving back to England. That's so weird. I know, right? Yeah, he's no. still on the roster for the UFC, but they never fight him. Is that the deal? I think they may have cut him after his last fight. I'm not sure. It's a trip, I hope they didn't. It? I like that guy. I, hope they I know. I like him too. Yeah. I went out and stayed with him actually. In, uh, you meet his mom? His mom. No, I met his mom. I just see her on Twitter, and I—I I mean, I love that lady. She's that's awesome, you know. She's on Twitter. I didn't know, I mean, that. dude. She she because she'd always like like, and it's like I don't know. It's like if it's like. Uh, Tom Kong supporters or something or uh -huh. something like that. It's been a while since I looked, but uh -huh. and she'd be there and then and we'd exchange messages. I was like, right, now. you know, she <laughs> she's his biggest fan for sure. It was awesome. Yeah. How's your mom feel about fighting? Was she nervous? She likes when you it. Got no, into she it? likes it. No, yeah, she was. She she uh, even when she comes to watch it live, she'll have to watch. She watches the TV. She can't watch it live actually as it's happening. So yeah. in her mind, if she watches the big screen. Right, it's you're still alive, alive. Yeah, but if she it's, watches it's alive, alive, you could get killed. Yeah, I guess. Right. For her, it's, it's just like she's watching a replay. Isn't it crazy? We're, I was talking and, and with KJ and, and uh, all the guys, like we're talking about um, like Brian Stan and Tim Kennedy and really fucking what a, uh, like, Brian is one of my favorite people. Like he, he got Brian no too. zero edge to him, you know, like yep. there's a lot of those military guys that got that, that strong edge to him and mm -hmm. he's just fucking, it's just all what it is and just, like yeah. he's fucking he's a real he is he is captain america that guy yeah, he absolutely. is amazing and uh he can be president one day and one of the kindest guys i heard he was i heard he was uh commentating for football for college yeah. football and stuff now yeah I'd, I'd hear him do boxing and then i'll switch the channel and be it's on awesome, football and i was like man. i know that voice and they're like oh that's b stan that's so good man. yeah he's dope but yeah it, it, you know him and 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 tim the same thing like uh <laughs> Keith was asking, he goes, do you ever get, like, before you go fight, what do you, he's like, no. He says, I don't, it's nothing. And it, it, he already knew that Keith was going to be like, you, you ever get nervous or you get, like, or what goes through your head? And he's like, no. Dude. He says, I'd like to say, because I know everybody has feelings like that. But uh -huh. And he's like, but it's literally nothing. It's like nothing. I walk out, like, with my heart rate doesn't go up. It's like nothing. And like, and Jeez. Tim Kennedy said the same thing. He goes, I've actually got to get hyped up. He yeah. says, because I go in, I'm too mellow. I'm too calm, and I don't have a fight edge on me. 
And wow. so I, my, my endorphins don't get going. My uh -huh. adrenaline doesn't start. He's like, I, you know, none of the, none of my hormones that would help me in battle. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm going into battle because yeah. it's only a fight because yeah. I'm not in a gunfight yeah, for my exactly. life. Like, it's, it's wild, uh, right? Them guys are crazy. It's man. a different deal. Like it's yeah. so fucking. It's like, a Tim Kenny's a guy I'd, I'd never want to piss off. I would never well, want to be mad at Co me. Coach was saying that we we're talking about rifles and stuff today, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Some some kind of super sniper oh, rifle. Sniper, yeah. They're like eight grand, right? And, yeah. And that like you know you could get a guy a mile away, even civilians like people yeah. that don't shoot very well. And uh, and and he was like, "Yeah, you you'd never want to piss off Tim Kennedy because, you know, you just get your mail and that you just last thing you'd look yeah. at is your stamp or whatever." And, yeah. and I was like, "I don't think so because he's such a savage. If yeah. he wanted to kill you, he would make he would get a doctor and he would just beat you <laughs> just before you're dead and then he would have that guy keep you alive longer and uh -huh. then he would beat you some more. Like he'd be like that guy in Reservoir Dogs, like you just cut fucked the ear up off bad enough yeah. that, that he was. Uh, you were on his radar." Yeah, it would be horrible. It wouldn't yeah. be quick. Yeah, so I rock up to the gym. After hitting minutes, I rock up to the gym and I open the door and here's you and Keith standing there with two assault rifles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Screaming like, what America. the fuck is going on? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> America. So wild. Yeah, and then you guys ran down the stairs and cleared all the rooms. And isn't that wild? That's the next incarnation for Greg Jackson, too. Yeah. that's all. Because he's like, this loves. isn't enough for me. It's, yeah. Fighting is, is what it is. But now we're going to go into tactical assaults. And yeah. I'm going to make these guys as good as they can be. Yeah. All right. That dude, he just he solves puzzles and then he gives. He's like, yeah. he sees systems and he's like, I can make this system better and we're going to give it back to these guys better so they're a little safer. And a little. It's like yeah. fucking beautiful, he can't help. Man. That's what he does, though. He can't, yeah. he can't help. Like, even when we had him out there jumping on crocodiles, yeah. he'd be sitting on the back of the crocodile and, and switching his legs out and changing positions. And he goes, hey, you know what? If I switch my legs like this, it gets a better hold on his back legs and I can do this and it stops him from rolling so much. Like he's like analyzing everything That's on the back awesome. there. awesome. Yeah, so that's just what Greg does. He's a freak like that. He really is. How to control the environment of chaos. I want yeah. to be in chaos, and then I want uh -huh. to control it and mitigate the danger as much as I can. All right. He's a tri you over here and talk about his own <laughs> like the professors he talks about learning all that stuff from uh -huh. are all mathematics majors. Yeah. Like high level mathematicians. Yeah, in his shit. office he's got like all mathematicians on his wall and <laughs> crazy guys. And then Shackleton. And, and Shackleton. He loves Shackleton. It's crazy. He told me the story. I go, why do you like that guy so much? And and he goes, uh, he goes, do you know the story? I go, not really. He says he's a guy. They had a shipwreck, uh -huh. and I think in Alaska or Antarctica or something. Antarctica, Antarctica. maybe. And um, and they had plenty of supplies that yeah. every man could live easy for like six months or eight months yeah. or something. Plenty of supplies, and they had all the wood. There's a shipwreck. They had shelter, all of that. And he goes, all right, guys, pack it up, and we're going. Yeah. And and uh, and he just he says, and the point is, Tate is that you just have to have a plan yeah. it doesn't have to be a good plan yeah. it doesn't have to be the plan that, that the plan can change yeah. but you got to have a plan you got to be confident in him yeah. and you got to lead it confidently yeah. and 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 so he took those guys and he took them on a walk basically yeah and made them and made them carry a boat they didn't have to take yeah made them made them because work because they needed gave purpose them, gave them during purpose. that trip yeah and then and then they you know i don't know how many lived or what it all was but he's like he says for sure if he'd have stayed there they'd have cannibalized each other yeah. they'd, there'd have been infighting there'd have been murders yeah. there'd have been all kinds of atrocities so he's like we got to get these guys to work and get them going i think it was a couple of years they were out there because yeah. they tracked all the way across to a point had to wait for the ice to melt enough build another boat out of what they took sail that back to civilization and then they wanted to get another boat to come back and they didn't want Shackleton to go. They're like, no, you've already been through it. And Shackleton's like, no, I left my men there. I'm going back Wild. to get my men. So he went back with them again on another dangerous journey just to get his men to come back again. Traveling in a boat in those days, it's not like, for sure we're going to make it. It's like, yeah. eh, 70% yeah, right. we're going to live. Yeah. Like 70%, yeah. like that seems like horrible odds still. Right. That's a trip. Yeah. I couldn't imagine uh uh. I mean, I'd probably sign up. I'm not going to lie. Sure if, if he said it was a 70% chance you and we're doing this, sign you're adventuring up. back then anyway. You're young. What am I doing with my life? Exactly. Like, what, I'm going to be a cobbler or a hat maker or whatever. I'm going to just go do this. Yeah. As men, we'd, like, we've lost this as we get older, but like, as civilizations got older, but we, we were defined by what we did in life. Yeah. People don't have a purpose anymore. 
Yeah. Like people just go to work, do their fucking normal it's shit. Funny you come say home. that. I, there's never a time I was more miserable than when I didn't feel like I had a purpose. Yeah. A purposeless man is a miserable man. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and and like I, Rogan's got a new bit right now that he's doing that is like, you know, it, it's too easy to get food. Yeah. It's too easy to. It's too easy for people to eat. Yeah, and so people get all kinds of weird idiosyncrasy and characteristics that are are, are kind of crummy to be around for the rest. Of, and but it's just like it's so simple to eat. Nobody needs to be accountable. Nobody needs to be responsible. Nobody needs to learn anything about uh -huh. how to survive. Like, yeah, which is a trip, man. Like, and that's so. It's such an accurate. It's always weird to me how much of an honest commentary um, comedians have about the world. Yeah, and and politics. It's always a shame to me that. Can't, one can't be president i'm like we already got clowns for a presidency anyway can't we just get can we get somebody up there well you got donald trump he's probably gonna be the next great president <sighs> can you imagine that's insane how's he difference. even making it him make it make a run difference. it's just a show people love the show yeah. right well it's just a puppet anyway do you guys have that in australia what do uh, you guys do we have a prime minister did england so. let you have your own stuff <laughs> that's not popular to say is it it's i don't know if i could throw, like throw this microphone at you no not keep talking no well, that's all right. Um, now we have we have I don't know what it is. I'm not that big a in prime politics. Minister. We have a prime minister. You get to vote. We get to vote for the prime minister, but it doesn't really matter anyway because if he's not doing good or the rest of the party don't like him, they'll fucking vote him out and then they'll put him someone else in there. So for that's us, it like, doesn't matter. In Italy or wherever, they're like, yeah, there's like <laughs> 600 representatives or there's yeah. there's, some, there's some kind of like parliamentary thing where yeah. it's like there's a thousand parties that everybody votes for. Yeah crazy that's like us too but then it doesn't matter who you vote for because say say like the uh say it's the green party right. the labor party the liberal party like which are our major ones if you vote for the green and they don't win they can give their votes to the liberal no way yeah so like when you vote for them you're really voting for these other guys so it doesn't really fucking matter anyway so it's usually only one of the two parties win it's either labor or liberal in australia we have all these other fucking parties it's it so easy i know but all these other parties promise yeah we're doing this we're gonna do that but they never get in right and then they give their votes to the, to They're the other like, party. Listen, the hippies aren't going to vote for the liberals over here fully because we're for whatever or whatever. Yeah. We want to pave roads. Yeah. But they'll vote. Okay, so the pop party, the pop party, <laughs> you'll give us all your votes after you guys lose? Yeah. Cool. We got all the hippies too. Like they, you could just load up the, I'm sure that's what they do. Yeah. Wow. I love a pot party though. And so, so how, how good is the, uh, how good is the, uh, the government, as far as the the money goes, like is is your dollar as powerful as like the the British pound or no, it's not. It, ours fluctuates so much, and I think ours relies a lot on China because they buy mm. all our natural resources. But you know, sometimes when I first moved over here, Australian dollar was terrible. Like I'd get uh, six dollars back for a dollar of American. Six dollars for a dollar Australian. Dollar, dollar Australian, I get six back in American. So oh, I come really? over, yeah, I sold everything I had, come over here, traded in like ten thousand dollars and got six thousand back. And then I went home a couple of years later and the strain Wait, dollars you worth, traded back you traded ten thousand Australian for six thousand For American. six thousand I thought it was I thought you said one to six, like no. traded at ten thousand, got sixty thousand American. No, like, that's no, no, strong hell, as no. shit. No, but then when I went back, the American dollar was weak. So I lost money again on the on the when I had to come back and, and trade money. That's not good. But right now, it's Australian dollars weak against America, which helps for me because I get paid in American dollars. Isn't it weird that it all... Do you watch Zeitgeist or any of that stuff? Yeah, I've seen it. I, I watch it, and I I almost get bored. Yeah. Because I'm like, I know. I know, you guys. Yeah. It's huge. <laughs> you can't unravel it. It's all... The Bilderbergers, whatever. <laughs> fucking 9-11 was a fucking insight. Whatever. The, whatever. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. So what? It's just as impotent as anything else. Like, there's not an answer in any... Like, yeah, yeah, it's all fucked. The world banks own everything. They want to own the world. They want to have a one-world government, for sure. Yeah. For sure, they started the euro so they could crash out Greece and Italy. And so, actually, Germany's bank could buy a country. So, yeah. the way they started, the, you know, splitting apart corporations in America in the 80s, they go, ooh, fuck, let's do this with countries. And they yeah. started doing that. And that, you know what I mean? Like, for sure, all of it. All that, but man, I, I just go back to like then. Here we are. I was whatever, either fortunate or, or, or unfortunate enough to be born, <laughs> and uh, here's my soul in this plane of existence, All right. going through whatever multiverse we're in, uh -huh. and uh, and you go. I just got to do the little stuff. It's all yeah. the little stuff. Like I think part of that 
like I wouldn't be surprised if Zeitgeist was put out by the goddamn World Bank. Right. You know what I mean? In, yeah. in a way, like it, it's not like so far fetched that it's not like here's all kinds of disinformation for you, so you don't worry about the little things, and so that maybe you need to get on Prozac because we're selling that <laughs> also, or whatever. Right. I don't know. I just go back right. to food, like farm to table funds and and things like that. Well, like, how do you support the people that are going to support nourishment in the world? Because it won't be long before all that's gone too. There won't be any good soil left. There will no. be no good water left. No, well, the soil quality today is nothing what it was a couple of hundred years ago. Nothing. So that's why, like, nothing. All the even the vegetables we eat now, there's nowhere near the nutrients they used to have. It's so crazy, dude. I remember the first time I went, I went to Italy, uh-huh. and I had fruit there, uh-huh. and I thought I'd never had an apple before. Yeah. Because I was like, they don't taste this way where I'm from <laughs> at all. Like yeah. a tomato would taste like what? Like, yeah. if you only eat tomatoes in America, you got no idea what a tomato yeah. tastes like. It's a trip, man. Yeah, I know. I, I, we're pretty lucky in Australia. Our food is uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Like most of our meats, grass-fed meat. Like, right. Like I tell my dad, you go well, buy people you, in you other buy places, grass. They're like, why would you buy anything else? What yeah. are you talking about? They yeah. look at you like you're. That's crazy what I said to my dad American. when I went home. I said, is that grass-fed meat? He said, what do you mean? Is it grass-fed meat? Cause it's fucking grass. Right. What are, what a cow's eat? What else is a cow <laughs> gonna eat? Stupid! It's a ruminant fucking animal. Yeah, right. Like that's the same thing. Like in our with our coffee, um, <laughs> is that everybody goes? Is it organic? Because yeah. it's a real good marketing term to say it's organic, but it's not organic uh-huh. because it's not in America. It's from Colombia, yeah, and everything is organic. It's yeah. like it's better than organic because yeah, it's right. not some bullshit <laughs> made up thing. It's like all the organic vegetables that you buy, uh-huh. they're still watered with pesticides and shit. Yeah. Maybe they're not fed that in the thing, but they're like it's like it's yeah. all poison, like right. in, in, at a certain degree until you get out of the country that's why i worry about like cuba and all the sanctions i'm like you poor cubans yeah. you guys had it going good but now america's gonna bring <laughs> mcdonald's over there good luck with your diabetes right for Ridiculous. sure it's a good thing you guys are free already or we if you, and it's a good thing you don't have a lot of oil because we would go no. over there and we would give you guys democracy yeah you would come over and <laughs> we, we need to show you how to do with that oil <laughs> <laughs> we can help you with this democracy you're lacking yeah well, I suppose we should sign off, man. You got to go all home right. and pack and all I that do, kind of stuff. I haven't even packed yet. How long is the trip to Australia? Uh, first class with the UFC, right? They first oh, class, absolutely. First class with in in the, in the cabbage in the in carry well, the baggage in the baggage claim, in really the baggage claim. I only flew one time, like internationally, first class, and it was delightful. It's unreal, isn't it? It's I flew, I flew, delightful. I fly business sometimes. I'm lucky enough to get an upgrade. That's pretty good. I heard that's like first class with the, the states, basically. Yeah. What's the difference? You don't get a robe. I mean, I went first. No, no, class I get. To- I have business class. I get pajamas. I get <sighs> a three course meal with real knives and forks. They must trust the. How much is a ticket to get to the rich people? They trust the knives. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like if you pay thirteen grand for a plane ticket, you're not going to kill someone. You don't want this thing going down. <laughs> What? Uh, how much is that? Is that what it is? Like twelve thousand dollars to go to Australia? No, I, I have no idea. I think uh, it's like six thousand dollars as opposed to twelve hundred dollars. So for business for class. business class. So first would be around ten to thirteen, I'd imagine. Ari Shafiri sent me a picture uh-huh. of him in first class, and I was like, I think the difference is, is like it's his own room. It's like yeah. a, it's like a pod heard, or yeah. something. Like you're in like a your own little bedroom pod type yeah. deal. The last time I flew business class, there was a man sitting next to me, and he was complaining the whole time, like, "Why aren't these windows electric? What's going on here?" Why are and like, then settle down. Man. Yeah, I was like, "What you the got fuck?" Like crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. You could jerk off right next to me, and I wouldn't even know. Business, you get a whole bed to lay down on. They come yeah. out. What time would you like your bed made, Mister Noak? And you tell them, "Hey, three hours into the flight." What time would you like your meal? What do you mean your bed made? So you have a different seat? Or no, no, your seat, seat kicks reclines? out into yeah. a flat bed. Then they put a mattress topper on it. Then they put a they come over and put a mattress topper yeah, on. Yeah, mattress topper. Like no, 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 mattress topper. Then they put like a sheet on top Dude, of that. that's way better There's than American first class. Stuff. Oh, this is Qantas. This is Australian airline. But uh, then his wife comes up so from first class. So if I go to class. Australia, I want to go Qantas. Yeah, Qantas is a great airline. Qantas okay. need to sponsor me for this. Uh, I would think so. But his wife comes up from first class, and she's like, oh, you'd never believe this. Kids running around down there, and they won't be quiet. And Those fucking people. I know. I'm like, They don't deserve fuck. anything in life. Right? You unappreciative fucks. Right? And here I am. Like, I think this was the first time I flew You're business like, this class. is the best right? ever. I was like, Why are you fuck, ruining this? Yeah. This is awesome, dude. And it wasn't until his wife left. So I was like, fuck, I should have, because ours was quiet. I, like, I should have offered his wife to swap me seats. Yeah, exactly. I'll take the first class seat. Yeah, she can sit up here in kids. business, I'm right? great with kids. Yeah, I love kids. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is Raz. Yeah. So that, are you a business class on the way? Um, I, I've got enough points. You're a big, tall man to go. No, no, no. I, I, yeah, I've got a friend back in Australia who will give me points 
So he sends over points to me. I use them points for for an upgrade. So I put in for an upgrade for this flight to Australia, which is 14, 15 hours. It's got to be hard to get an upgrade. I bet they get sold well, out right away. Yeah, that's the thing. If they don't sell them all, I'll get an upgrade. But if they do, I hope I'm they fucked. don't. I hope everybody's cheap. Yeah, me too. Upgrade me all the way to first class. So are you going to 155 next? Is that what I heard? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me, I forget who it was the other day. They're like, man. Kyle's the biggest 170 pounder I ever saw in my life. I go, I thought that when he fought 185, <laughs> I thought that fool is big as fuck. Yeah, I don't know why people say that. I don't know because you're big, Carl. But I'm, it's not like I'm 186 right now. It's the lightest I've ever been got to a fight. Big guns. That's the oh, I got skinny legs. You do have skinny yeah. legs. Yeah. Like I wrestled with Luke Rockhold at the ranch not long ago. Yeah. He was like, how the fuck do you make 170 the same size as me? I'm like, no, I'm not. You're fucking twice the size of me. You know, yeah. he's a big dude. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know why people say that. Do you? I, I, I didn't really know. I didn't realize how I was built really until uh, a couple <laughs> weeks ago. I was sitting by this short Mexican dude. Uh-huh. They, he manages this place, this great place um, called Clutch. Uh, uh-huh. We'll go for tacos when you come visit me sometime. Yep. But um, and I'm sitting down next to him. He's probably 5'8 or uh-huh. something like that, 5'10 maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And and he goes, uh, he goes, how are we the same height? And we're sitting on a stool. And I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like. <laughs> We are the same fucking height. I'm like, I got some long ass legs. Like, so of course they're skinny. I've got, uh, but you're fucking broad as well. I am. I'm a, I'm a big bitch. Yeah, you are. Keith, all, yeah, every time he looks at me, he's like, you should have fought heavyweight. What's wrong with you? Like, yeah, you should have. I know. Yeah. I got to ask, does that mustache help you get women? Uh, it keeps, it keeps the, uh, it keeps the food out of my mouth. Yeah, like from getting on my face. I mean, it looks cool. And all. I mean, you, you know, for one of the most handsome guys that Australia ever produced, <laughs> to ask a gorilla, if, like, does that help you get? One? Like, I don't, I don't know. I've got to be so eloquent and so kind, <laughs> and for somebody then to maybe be gracious enough to be like, I guess, I'll, you know, I could hang out with Tate. Maybe I'll let him take me to dinner. Like, it, it's just, I'm destined to just, you know. Be one of the guys. No, nah, that's some cool shit. I wish I could grow a beard, like a big beard. Well, you could one day. Now, do, do they make you, are you allowed to do that for your movie, most movie roles? I go into the director this way sometimes. Uh-huh. Sometimes I wear my grill. I'll have a gold grill in uh-huh. if I think it's going to be a part that works. Like an equalizer, <laughs> I wore a grill all through it. It's fucking rad. Really? Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll do different shit. Like for Breaking Bad, I definitely I went in like this and uh-huh. I was like, and they're like, yeah, cool. We like that or whatever. And then and then I go in sometimes and they and we comb it out and uh-huh. like I was just on. Uh, have you ever watched Twin Peaks a TV show? The one was on years ago. David Lynch yeah, was through yeah. the nineties. I don't I remember. I, was, yeah, yeah. I never. I was a kid. I never really watched yeah. it like that. How old but, are you? Uh, Twenty eight right now. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I just wasn't into it. It seemed like it seemed like one of those things. I guess at the time where I'd hear everybody talking about it, but it was uh, it was something that it, I felt like you had to get into it. And I'm like, yeah. I don't have time for all that. Yeah. But I was on, on, they're making a movie, and so I was on that, and then, you know, it's like that, it was kind of a character where it's like, of course it's going to be like, so I kind of feel out whatever it is, but uh-huh. I, yeah, I'll push it. I'll be like, I want to put a little flavor on this thing. Yeah. I want, especially when I'm, and if I'm not hired as a stunt guy, if I'm hired as an actor, uh-huh. it's like I want, I'm like, I want to do what I want with the character at a certain degree. So did they let you have a bit of freedom with it? Yeah, like Antoine Fuqua, he was the director, equalizer, and he's like, oh yeah, he's like, Oh no, I like that. And you could be like this, and maybe eating a sandwich or something. And then I'm like, Brad, I love sandwiches. Yeah, that's and right. I'll do that all day I get long. To eat and paid and he's cool. And that dude cool. is such a G. That Antoine Foucault. Uh-huh. He did that movie, which was great. It was a great movie. But he also did Training Day. Oh, really? Which kicked all the ass. That was uh-huh. that was as good as Pulp Fiction. Oh, you remember me. when that first came out? That was the shit. Dude. It still and then is. He did but... Man on Fire. Really? I love that movie. Really great. Fucking love that really man. Lovely chopping that dude's fingers off. And then I think off. he just—I know that's what I just thought of too. And then, the, and then he cauterizes him. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's some, that's some Tim Kennedy shit, right? Right. There, I bet you. Um, and then he's doing—he did the Magnificent Seven, I think. I think he did the remake. I think he was the director on that. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna have to start uh, looking out for this guy more often. I think that you know what too. It's funny you know, when you say you want to get an acting. All the all the actors that have all the jobs—they're all English or Australian. Yeah, because we're but, talented. And then, and then they fake that. They, can you do an American accent? Yeah. Let's hear it. <sighs> um, hey, Tate. <laughs> hey, t- hey, Tate, come on down to the gym tomorrow. And hey, let's Tate. train a little bit and then go get lunch. Come down to the gym tomorrow. We'll train. Get some lunch. I don't know. I, yeah. can, I can do it, but when you put me on the spot, I can't I do know, it. It's hard. 
I can, I, knew, I can do an English accent if I hear it a little bit and I go, oh, okay, cool. And, but then I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah, if you want me, like, yeah. But those people can. When you put me on the spot, I'm like, uh. But if I practice it, hell yeah. You watch Peaky Blinders? No, I've heard you it's great. See it. You love it. Are you in that? No, but it's awesome. No. Well, maybe I won't watch it. I kind of like, watch stuff that doesn't have me in it. Even if, no, no, you can't. I like it a little bit more when you're in it, though. I'm like, hey, I know that dude. I like it more too. I like, I know that dude. even in the movies. I go, yo, there's Tate. I say to the guy sitting next to me, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. I do, man. I make sure everyone can see me pointing That's at the screen. So funny. Because then they'll be like, oh, what's he pointing at that guy for? Dude, I went to I watched the Equalizer with my mom, uh-huh. and that was the best because that was like, yeah. it was like for a full two minutes, it's just my fat face and Denzel, like. like <laughs> Uh, and it is a trip watching her like it's cool watching her get excited does, and does, all. does her heart break a little bit when you die on screen uh, i don't know if she feels that way there's people that say that though they're or like they're little kids uh-huh. like that you i'll have to call later no no hey how are you doing like <laughs> you're really crazy yeah 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 i'm like what are you doing watching what are you doing letting them watch that movie that's like letting your kids follow me on Instagram or some shit. Don't do that. <laughs> they're, they're not going to like what they find. Yeah. Like I got a fucking meme on there that I heard about from three parents that are like, that is like, uh, hey girls, here's a little tip about hand jobs. Use your mouth. And uh, <laughs> boy, oh boy, that didn't That's go over well tip. with the family. <laughs> so too. <I> so. <laughs> uh, well, what, well, what's a little girl doing looking at a I grown mean, man? Really, I don't know. Uh, you got it. The internet's great. Yeah. But, but it's also goddamn it, temper it. Yeah, right. Right. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna let my kids have the internet even. Just I'm gonna give live a off stick. I seen a good meme the other day. What? It had, it actually didn't even say anything. It was just a picture, and it was like uh, the different. It was just so a family sitting around playing together, like couple, two kids were over there playing Monopoly or some shit. The dad was playing with the baby. Fuck it, and the mom was doing something with another little girl. Or something. And it was like before the internet was around. Right. So it's showing family life before and then the another boring. one after that's, one, yeah. That's <laughs> the most boring thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's sweet. It's yeah, big, and then it's afterwards it shows them all on their phones at night time. Yeah. You know, I could, I never, I didn't even get on the internet until I was 22 like, years what's old. What's your dad like? I don't know, I've got an iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> we never talk. <laughs> <laughs> Does your dad use the internet? No, he's... Uh, Oh, he sends emails and stuff. Oh, no, but like in the meme, like if you're little oh, kids yeah. and shit, and the teacher's like, so what's your dad do? Fuck, I don't know. We yeah. got iPhones at my house. Yeah, exactly. I heard a, a great thing about Steve Jobs during, I think it was about Steve Jobs, and he goes something like, uh, they go, well, how's, how's your kids? They must be great with the iPad and stuff, and they must yeah. be real wizards. And, and he's like, no, I don't let them do any of that stuff. He's like, why, why would I take them away and distract them yeah. from the most unbelievable uh, computer and imagination and uh, creative workspace that they have in the world, which is their minds. Why would I? Why would I mutate that by giving them this? And I was from like, the guy who created it. That's amazing, right? Yeah, you got sponsors and stuff. You want to say something? No, to? I got no sponsors. Nothing. No, but no, nothing. Oh, the UFC, nothing. The UFC is like that now. Reebok, now. Why don't you get Reebok, yourself, UFC ban us over? Why don't? Why don't? And Reebok fuck this. Why don't you? Uh, that's a rough one. That's a t-shirt. Shit, this is gonna be. That's your next know. t-shirt. I did. I didn't mean that UFC. If you we can edit that out, if you want. That's right. Um, there's a lot of guys. I, Dodson was saying the other night. He's like telling me how good. Uh, he's like he's real happy about it. Yeah. And uh, there's guys that are like that. Well, that see, but then I, there's guys that have hustled sponsorships before uh, that are like, this isn't so good for me. Yeah. But it's what, what about Cowboy? He's got Budweiser. Uh, do you have like I know a lot of guys. Like what is it? Is it, is it Muscle Farm that started the thing up in the Elevation yeah, Team, I right? Think so, yeah. And so they made the whole gym so that all these guys can that our fighters that are there will be posting that stuff. So they're they're like buying fighters Instagrams yeah. in a way. Well, you the guys have to go up there and train. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing with that is you have to go up there and train. You have to use their coaches. You can't like. Well, I'm gonna go up there and train, and bring my. No, no, I know, but like that—that's what guys are doing now. So, like, oh yeah, buy them. if you're a company that is is like uh, Nike or something, and they want to yeah. sponsor you and be like, "Hey, dude, you're just gonna be wearing our stuff and your shirts and all that stuff. We want to be branded, and we want you to put up five different posts a day or something like that or whatever." Done. I'll do it. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised they're not doing that now. I know. Or is there a stricture against that? No, from no, on we're high? no, we're allowed to do whatever we want. Um, sponsorship wise outside, outside of the fights but fight week if we have anything media or anything like we have to be wearing the Reebok gear or clothes with no logos well, yeah so do you wear clothes with nothing then 
Are people um, rebelling like that? No, not really. Everyone's just wearing a Reebok yeah, shoe. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's weird, though, that they know how to make clothes. They know how to make clothes cool. Everybody went through the affic- affliction phase where they're like, ooh, that's not very cool. Like Everybody <laughs> found out you know, like about stuff, and they're like, whatever, whatever. Uh, how come Reebok makes the corniest-looking clothing right. for the most badass sports in the world? Right. Like, the CrossFit shoot is cool. Like, yeah, yeah, I like and, their and it works stuff. for their stuff. Yeah, and they're they're you know that really was appalling to me were the women's uh, kits that they had, yeah. and I was like, those are ill fitting for them. They don't they're not they don't look good, and and I don't care if you're a woman uh, fighter or if you're a woman beauty queen, like they want to look good and they want their clothes to fit and it's a it's got to be enough of a thing already. You've got boobs that you've got to contend with and be in a combat sport. It's like. At least do some testing with actual right. women instead of some dude going, oh, this will work for him. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? There's no beta testing here. There's yeah. nothing like a year before you're giving 20 girls stuff and going, hey, what is this? And problem solving it and stuff. Yeah, right. like, it's kind of thoughtless, Yeah, which like, is, seems rude to me. Yeah, exactly. And I have poor, poor manners. Yeah. You know. Actually, I do have sponsors. Yeah. Yeah, Caveman Coffee. Caveman Coffee. Caveman Look Coffee, as go. always. Oh, and Nuevo Cerveza. Uh, yeah, I can't uh, say that, but that, that. Nuevo mm, Cerveza. Nuevo Cerveza. Nuevo. 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 Nuevo Cerveza. Cerveza. Pretty good. Isn't Cerveza head? That's Cabeza. That's Cabeza. Yeah. You know, even Tom Watson learned Spanish. I, le- I know poquito. Very goddamn poquito. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks very much, man. No worries. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk again soon. And right. uh, everybody be sure to, uh, you know, watch Kyle Noak on what date? What date is the fight? The 15th, is it? 14th? Yeah, the 15th in Australia, 14th here in America. So we're fighting early in the morning. Thank you, America. Man, how are you changing your schedule for that? I'll just get there and do it. Have you been, like, training in the morning? Like, uh, you don't adjust your time. No, anymore. no, I'll just get there and do it. Whatever, whatever. It's a fight. Yeah. Who's all going out with you and how? Greg Jackson. Israel Martinez, uh-huh. Mr. Winklejohn. Is is he living here now? No, he's in Chicago. That's what I thought. Yeah, he just come down helping out now cool. and then. But uh, now I do S- mean working on. Oh, I love Izzy. Funniest dude ever. Man. Really kind. But dude. Uh, I've been doing all my wrestling with Jafari Veneer, Cowboys wrestling coach. Rad. Super D. He's fucking awesome. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, I love you very much, man, and uh, Thank I can't you, wait to watch, and I hope you travel well, and we'll Thank talk you, soon. No worries. And all you motherfuckers, uh, have a great goddamn day, and I hope this finds you well and that you enjoyed it, and come and see us at uh, NuevoCerveza.com, CavemanCoffee.com, uh, MyBloodyMariaOnIt.com. What else we got going on? Concrete Cowboy all through Dallas, Texas, oh, Austin, yeah. Texas, and Houston. If you want to go get your groove on at the, the sexiest, most badass <laughs> party crib in the world or you can go to our brand new spot in dallas called clutch on cedar springs road all day long uh sundays is off the chain there um it's fucking dope it's really it's really great when you get back we'll have to go to texas Carl. I'm going. all right yeah you've been telling me that for a while but i'm going this well, anytime you want to make my phone ring which is never right. well i called it tonight and you didn't even answer it historically speaking left your voicemail and everything i i'm still waiting to get it i can't wait i look forward to it <laughs> All right, man. Peace out, y'all. Be good.